today's video, we're going to be closing down on this little series we've been shooting with Aragon. We're purely stopping his foundational education at this point just because he's still a really young horse, only three and a half year old. And his bloodlines, both from his mother and his father, are breeds that are maturing quite late. And so therefore, it was just a period of his time, of his life, where he's, he's quite adapted and he's muscled up enough and his body is quite stable and decent bone infrastructure and he's not too young. Um, so we just wanted to lay a good foundation so that we give him a bit more time to develop his body and then he's going to have a, a proper development of his, of his, of his advancement um, in his education. Welcome to Horse Academy. My name is Ray. This is Aragon as just mentioned. He has um, been coming along quite well. So we're just going to jump in today straight away and just recap on everything that we've done to this point. Make sure we didn't leave any holes down in the bottom of the foundation so that when he's ready to start with his advanced education that it's easy just to pick up and then continue on his development. Are you ready my boy? Let's go. Yeah, so today will be the first time that we're riding Aragon. And uh, I try and leave things as raw as possible. So since the fourth ride, I have not done any other work with him. Gave him a couple of days of break. And now I'm just hopping straight back on and continuing where we left off. If I'm not able to do that, then I can't rely on this foundation in the future when we start advancing his education. So right away, hopping on, making sure he's comfortable with me, he's licking and chewing his lips, he's quite relaxed. I can move around in the saddle, touch him around, and I can bend his head and neck. Got decent influence over that. He's really soft, I'm only using the tips of my fingers. Good boy. Make sure you give him slack on the opposite side. All right, so before we jump into walking, he's already in the mindset of walking forward. The first first three sessions, that was a challenging one um, to get him to move forward. Um, but now he wants to only do that. So I just remind him like, cool, we've got impulsion backwards. We have got influence over moving his body backwards, all finger, fingertips off. I'm sitting deeper into the saddle. I'm gonna exaggerate to you. And I'm just making slight contact with the head, literally just with my fingertips. Cool, so that's hopping on for the fifth time. And straight away after being able to back him up, I'm also gonna ask him further cues. Thank you, my boy. Just putting my right leg on quite far back. I'm really exaggerating in the beginning where I want them to move off from the pressure. Putting my left leg back quite far. He's moving his shoulders, it's not what I'm asking, so I'm guiding him with his head. And then when he does it, I'm gonna reward him, it's not perfect. The right side was a lot more accurate. I'm guiding him a bit more with his head, just, there we go. And he's licking his lips, I'm giving him a chance to relax. Good boy. I add a vocal cue if he's not moving before I start adding more consistent or more rhythmic pressure on the, on the leg. So first it's just steady pressure and then I squeeze. So steady pressure is fine. I don't want a response from steady pressure. Just my leg might move around. Otherwise it gets too soft and too sensitive. So my leg steady pressure and then I'm applying squeeze and I get a response, not perfect. Squeeze. There, that's better. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, so that's the hindquarters. Now we're just gonna walk on and warm him up for a second or two. And then we're gonna move on towards his shoulders. Then we can do some trot work. So he's already got a, a magnet wanting to be closer to his friends, so he doesn't really want to walk off to the side of the, of the Picadero. So I'm just guiding him, directional influence with the head and my legs at the same time. I'm just cha changing directions, influencing with my leg and the hackamore. Walking to the outside of the Picadero. Good boy. 
So what I'm doing is I'm also preparing him for proper trail riding. So this is he's going to be his main job is riding out on trail. So I'm adding a bit of rain pressure to the neck and then I'm guiding him with the inside rain. So I use the outside rain starting to prepare him for neck raining. So like right here I'm adding him to the outside. Just get him used to hugging the fence a bit more so you can use more surface area of the Picadero or arena in the future. So in this case I'm adding neck rain on the left and then I'm adding the inside rain. Neck rain on the left and then inside rain and outside leg at the same time getting those shoulders to move over. Right leg, good boy. Right leg, right rein. In, there we go. Look at that nice big step. So I'm just working on shoulder control. I've just had a bit of a warm up walk just to get everything loose. So again, I'm going to continue on the same side that I was on. He wants to walk forward and I want to do shoulders. So I'm just asking, please back up for a moment. Just breathe. He's a bit excited. Yeah, we're going to do some trotting. Just give us a moment. Good boy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to jump back on to the shoulders. He's already anticipating, so just my intentions. He's so, so soft on intentions, and that's exactly what we want. We don't want complete anticipation, therefore I'm doing all mix mash, not being consistent with a specific pattern at the moment. It's just when I ask a specific cue, I'm quite consistent with that cue so that we can not, not so that we make sure we don't confuse our horse. So the, the pattern of maneuvers or exercises throughout the session is all at random, um, semi-random. So it's about warming up and getting him responsive so that you've got relative influence over the parts of the body that you need for that specific exercise. And then you can progress to more advanced things and at random so he doesn't anticipate the same thing every single time. He's a bit concerned about something that he saw some movement through the bushes. Oh, back, back. Oh boy. So I allow him to look and I don't apply pressure in that situation. I just coax him down and then I'm not going to ask too much of him because he's, his central nervous system is just aroused a bit. So he's gone into the sympathetic nervous system and we're going to get him down. <laughs> cool. Back down in the parasympathetic, just there we go. Dropping his head and neck. Not walking off. There we go. Back, back. Back, back. Oh boy. Whatever that was, I can't see. It's quite thick bush behind me. But it's got his attention properly. There we go. All right. Not going to walk off, so now I'm going to engage with his mind. So he's listening with both ears to me. So I'm applying left leg shoulders, and he gives me a proper yield. And I'm going to reward him. Now we're going to give right leg shoulders. Oh, he's very spooked about whatever that was. I'm going to allow him to walk over to there and have a look. Nothing concerning him. Give him a chance to investigate the area. It's essentially going to be his job, so I'm already working on those principles of... There we go, big sigh. So, just coming back into the center here. And I want to just revise quickly on the body influence. We're busy recapping everything from the foundation, from the bottom to where we've stopped with him before he moves off to the next part of his education in about six or eight months from now. There we go. Lick and chew, cocking a hind leg just about. You can't work with a horse that is completely aroused. You can't 
really educate them or teach them new things and if you're going to force it down on them you're just going to make things more stressful and difficult in the future so just co coax your horse down and if they need to walk allow them to walk if it's not if it's safe it's all about engaging optic flow when they walk so that's why they want to walk naturally that's why they want to move forward that's when horses run and they get their safe distance from the predator that's when they get to relax again Good boy. All right, so I'm just gonna keep on coming back to where we want to be because I want to work on his his foundations. Just recap on everything. Whoa, good boy. Stopping is good. Forward motion is good. Whoa, halting. Backing up is good. We've got hind quarters, but I'm not so happy with the shoulders. There we go. Just need a bit more control with the shoulders, not with him falling over. I need him to step. Good boy, I like that. So I'm going to give him a bit longer reward there. Alright, not just a micro release, but a, there we go, that's why. Just so that he understands that's what he keeps getting rewarded for. So I'm going straight back to the other shoulder. Good boy. Good boy, thank you. Reward one step. Remember, if you can consistently get one step, then you can start asking for more steps. But when you ask for multiple steps in the beginning, or just even after the first try, you get a result like right there. Just all confusion and no precision. He's very distracted by whatever is spooking him, so I'm just, there we go. Coaxing him to what I asked. And until he gives me a proper response and then a reward. So I'm trying to get his attention back to me. That's why I keep on asking for some little movements now. Good boy. And whoa. Back. Good boy. Hand quarters. I'm asking him to heal with a straighter body, which is a bit more of an advanced, advanced movement to that kind of precision. But we're just trying to get some advancement in the foundation so that it is easier whenever we move on. He's very tense now about this situation. Come on, boy. There we go. Good boy. Just get a couple of good steps and a big reward. All right, we're going to just be walking. Uh, it might be a bit of a break in this camera session. Uh, just continuously walking. It's just engaging optic flow, changing multiple directions, and then we'll start going into some transitions. And the more transitions we do and change in direction, the more attention we'll get from him to pose a bit more attention. You'll see his ears coming more towards us. The more transitions we do and the more directions we change. Boy, let's go. We just had about two, three minutes of just a bit of walking and just engaging some optic flow. He's trying to calm down his nervous system a bit and then we're just going to engage back into some trotting. And just a couple of transitions about trotting up and down and changing our directions. see how good he's doing with the mounting he's even finding the mounting sort of a, a relaxation point because he understands it, the concept
All right, so just to sort of remind about this this little episode, it's just all about recapping on everything that we've done to this point. And then once Aragon is happy with that and I'm happy with this session, we're not gonna do another one. Then he's gonna have a bit of off time. Just doing a bit of serpentines. Something I have not done with him at all. <laughs> the, of an exercise because of the situation. Okay. Within the foundation, it's really essential that you're able to walk, trot, and canter your horse on a loose rein um, in a safe manner without getting hurt. And that comes from transitions and directional changes. So the more you do, the better you get your horse. And what we've done with Aragon is what you're able to see within all the episodes of the videos. I haven't done much extra work just because of his age and his body development. So yes, I could do more. Yes, we could push him more. And yes, you need more. You can't just think this is a good enough foundation and you can all of a sudden go build a dressage or a jumping horse from this or a venting horse. Yeah, um, there's a lot more more work that needs to be done, a lot more hours you need to spend in the battle to develop muscles with your horse and the more muscle your horse develops the more confidence they develop within themselves and also the more transitions you do and the more changes of direction you do the better confidence you build within your relationship between the two of you the better your horse will understand your communication the more trust he will have in you um, if you have established the foundation correctly by always releasing and giving him some breaks in promising him some good rewards from his efforts. All those little things build up over time and it just gets better and more nourished and well established as time goes on if you do it correctly every single time. So I'm just doing many changes of directions at the moment and exercises we haven't really worked on, some bending, just getting him a bit more supple off my inside leg. So I just aid with my inside rein and I add inside leg if he if needs some impulsion or gather my outside leg, like right there. Good oh boy, there we go. Until he gets soft in the moment, he gets soft off my hand and off my leg and I can feel the bend, then I reward him. So I need to put myself into Aragon's hooves right now. Wood. Because if I don't do that, I'm not applying empathy. And therefore I've been sharing everything to this point in this little session we've been having about his, his point of view in life and how can I help him and set him up for success. If I don't do that, then we, we might just both fail and I'm going to break his foundation and also set future training up for more difficulty. Okay. So I'm just applying a bit more pressure there. He's being overreactive, so I'm losing his mind, going into the parasympathetic nervous system. And the reason why I mentioned I need to apply empathy in the situation, so it's changing from day to night, and in the environment we are in, there are predators, and um, there's already been a couple of jackals calling, and all the birds going to bed, and it's just a heightened state of alertness automatically for the instinct of a horse um, to be more aware of this as change, especially in an environment like we are in. So yeah, it's a bit of adaptation for this man. And first time I ride him at this time of the day as well. And only fifth ride, had a bit of a break between the fourth and the fifth ride. Oh boy. So yeah, smells change, wind direction change, all those kind of things. So I'm putting myself in his shoes and I'm understanding his umwelt as well. The, the world as it is perceived by, by him. I got a really nice walk, very responsive. I get, I'm getting his attention, it's probably about 60 to 70 percent right now. So it's much better, it's much closer to a point like I'm up, asking him to go up into his first trot. 
uh, pressure before the area. Not so keen on going to, and when he gets to that area, I'm sitting quietly. So I'm making less pressure in the area that he's not keen on, on being right now. So every time he gets closer to where his friends are, or to the side of the picadero that he's most comfortable with, I'm going to apply pressure. Get the trot. And then we're going to go pressure until he is where he want to be. And then we sit down. And every time I sit down, he's rating my seat very well. He goes straight back to a walk. I'm ready, I'm not applying any rain pressure when I sit down and it's just boop, listens right away. Up trot. Like right here I'm gonna try. Oh boy. I'm gonna rate with my seat. Oh not listening, so now I'm gonna apply some reins and good boy. So I'm just basically doing transitions with the situation. I'm going to change direction. Bend him around my inside leg. Good boy, and I release pressure when I'm walking to the area he doesn't want to be. Like it's less stress, less pressure here. And the moment he gets excited to go to the other side, I'm going to apply pressure. Like, okay, let's go work that side. First time I'm doing some bending exercises at the trot with him. But again, it's possible because we've got a decent foundation. The reason I'm doing it is just making more work at the fence he wants to be and the fence he doesn't want to be. Oh, he almost ran my leg into the fence there. The fence is not in 100% ideal height. Oh, he. So he right away gets it, like, okay, well now, now on this side I get to rest. So he immediately starts getting softer eyes. His attention drifts, unfortunately, to the area of concern. But it's important that in such a situation that you are the neutral thing and you, you can bring him back to confidence and relaxation. All right, let's go on a little walk. I'm just getting back into a walk for purposes of confidence. I'm applying outside leg when it gets too close to the fence. And I'm applying a bit of inside rain. Oh boy. I haven't really taught him how to follow the fence. So it's all part of the foundation that would be further if I would do more riding and more work with him. Just like I explained, it's all about limita lim limiting his, his level of of hard work right now because of his skeletal development that still needs to take place. Good boy, it's gone a little trot. But he's not overreacting anymore, so now I'm just asking him to go a full round. And tug the fence. Good boy. Cool, that was a, almost a perfect round. Oh, boy. <laughs> he rated my intentions more than my seat right there, but I'm gonna give him a praise for that. I was well done. He took to the vocal cue very seriously, and that's part of the foundation. I gave him that, so yeah. Good boy. Gonna do a bit of a semi roll back on the inside. Good boy, trot. Nice. Okay. 
I had a vocal cue when I needed to not necessarily responsible, but because of this little magnet and also the slightly stressful area of the picadero, he needs a bit of motivation every now and again. So I would give him a bit more freedom to be on a loose rein in an open arena because there's more space and he won't bash into the side and he can choose his direction a bit better. Boy. I'm just going to back him up to be square with the fence to set him up for the next directional change. I'm going to do a roll back into the fence again. A lot of the things I'm doing today with him in this sort of closing down session is really, really brand new things to him. And the reason why I'm doing that is just purely to see, do we have any holes in the foundation? Because I'm putting a lot of pressure and, and I'm asking really quite a lot. One, because of his mindset and two, because of his level of training. The amount of time we've spent in the saddle is really limited. So I'm just testing him to see like, did we leave anything out? Is there any parts of the foundation that we need to um, go back to the starting blocks or can we just in the future um, just continue building from where we left off. We found relaxation and we found that on the side which he was most nervous about. Closest to the potential danger. Good boy. It's quite nice to see even in the short time with this little amount of work how he's been developing some new neck muscles and shoulder muscle development just purely because of my weight on him and that's something we always need to consider when we when we saddle a horse for the first time the first couple of rides or first couple of weeks of riding their body adapts so quickly and their pectoral and their triceps um, so excuse me I forget the correct term for the horse's mus muscles but anyway so the shoulder shoulder muscles and the, the chest muscles and um, these muscles all expand really quickly just like any weight lift or, or um, heavy weight trainer or body weight trainer's body might adapt quite quickly um, so it does the horses and that then changes the angles of the shoulders and even um, the, the width of the shoulders and the withers which will change the kind of saddle fitting that is required for healthy saddle good boy cool I'm gonna head a roll back to the inside of the fence I'm using shoulders reins Good boy. Trot. Straight back into a trot. And stop square with the fence. Oh. <laughs> he stops quite well. So I'm going to back up. Hind quarters. Shoulders. <laughs> trot. Good boy. Yeah, so I really feel and I really quite like this energy. It's quite forward going. It's the most forward going we've been since we started this whole marathon. And it's under control as well. It's not like he's doing it because he's spooky. He's understanding my body language much better. I'm gonna change direction on a trot. That was the first time we do that. I'm really asking for a lot of precision from very little work. Stretching that mind decently. Whoa. Big, big. Oh boy. So for ride number five, that is it. I'm gonna leave things right there. 
thank you so much for your time and effort in viewing the, the series of Aragon. Um, if you haven't seen the other episodes and you are curious to know how it started, um, yeah, please feel free and go back and watch or scroll through them and feel free to leave any questions down in the comment section so that I can engage with you and, and potentially help you help your horse. And if there's any further content that you would like to see, um, whether it is problem solving or picking up the hooves or horses or all sorts of things that people find struggles with, and this is why we are here. Horse Flow Academy is all about helping people, helping horses. Thank you for your time and interest in learning more about horses and horsemanship. Till next time.